The time is 10 a.m. and this is WKYT Midmorning. A family mourns after a man drowns in southeastern Kentucky in a lake there. Changes in snow days may be on the way in Fayette County. And a Kentucky family is trying to recover from a tragic crash in Texas. This is WKYT Midmorning. Good morning to you. We're so glad you're with us. Tuesday, May 24th, a beautiful day out there. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Barbara Bailey. You said it, a beautiful start yeah. to the week. We had nice a, to see how long it can continue. Say, we had it yesterday with the sunshine, yeah. but now the temperature's coming up as well, so uh, it's a little taste of summer. Let's check in with meteorologist Micah Harris. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Yeah, we're definitely not used to the sunny skies three consecutive days. We're going to do it again today. Absolutely fantastic weather. No issues whatsoever. We get into the afternoon. We go from the 60s and 70s right now to the 80s later on today. Lower 80s is the first time we've clipped that in almost two weeks. So that summer feel is moving on in. But the actual mugginess, the, the thunderstorms, that comes later on. I'm going to show you when I expect that in my seven-day forecast coming up. And we'll see you then. Thank you. It was a tragic night at a southern Kentucky lake. Investigators telling us that a man drowned while swimming with a friend. It happened not far from the spillway of Laurel Lake in Whitley County. Investigators say they found the man's body in the water late last night. Whitley County's emergency management director, Danny Moses, says the 21-year-old was at the spillway with his wife and their young child. Moses says the man and a friend walked around the cove and then tried to swim back. Moses tells us it didn't take crews long to find the man. We knew where he went down in general location. And with ROV, you know, we had a, a light and camera. And probably 15 minutes after we put it in, we were able to locate him. Uh, that doesn't that don't happen all the time, but uh, this time we were lucky. And Moses says the lake is very deep in places, and everyone should wear a life jacket. Fayette County could be the next Kentucky school district to do away with snow days as we know them. The school board is considering adopting a non-traditional instructional program. More than 40 school districts in Kentucky are already using that program. With NIT days, when school is canceled for bad weather, students can learn from home. Some parents say they have some concerns. I'm very strong in believing that they need to have structure, they need to have someone help them. And I've just seen too many situations where kids at home don't have anybody to help them and they just do it any way they want to so they get it turned in. Last night, the Fayette County School Board approved a motion to apply with the Kentucky Department of Education for the non-traditional instruction program. The board said the program would not start in Fayette County until at least the 2017-2018 school year. Well, with the 4th of July a little more than a month away, the downtown Lexington Corporation is racing the clock to find a new location to launch the city's fireworks celebration. For years, the fireworks show has been launched from property owned by the R.J. Corman Company on Main Street. But that company doesn't want the site used for fireworks this year. Leaders of the downtown Lexington Corporation tell us they're now looking for a new site but they say finding one will be a challenge because of the show's big size. It needs a 600-foot clearance zone. We're told that one option would be to use a smaller site and reduce the size of the show. And we'll stay on top of that, of course, as the holiday approaches. For the second time this week, police are investigating a break-in at a Lexington business. The same one hit twice. Police say someone used a rock to smash through the front door of Ken Towery's off Leestown Road this morning. They say it does not look like the crook got away with anything, but police say it is very similar to a break-in yesterday morning at Ken Towery's location on Todd's Road. There will be extra police working an annual cycling event going on this weekend, a year after a participant was killed in a hit and run. Pam Thomas with the Bluegrass Cycling Club says more than 2,000 cyclists are expected to participate in the Horsey 100, a ride through central Kentucky. Thomas says there will be more police this year, and for the first time, there will be signs up warning drivers to be on the lookout for cyclists. During last year's event, Mark Hinkle was killed by a suspected drunk driver in Scott County. The Bluegrass Cycling Club plans to honor him during this year's ride. 
Survivors of a Texas crash that killed four members of a Lexington family are improving today. Israel Avalar and his three sons, Kevin, Daniel, and Matthew, died in that weekend crash. His wife, Hilda, and his daughter, Kimberly, also another family member, survived. 21-year-old 20, well, Vivian Avalar was not with her family at the time. She's now in Texas, though, and was recently able to see her mother for the first time since the crash. She recognized me and uh, knew that I was there, and uh, she's just in a lot of pain, I think, right now, and, she, you know, a lot of medications, but she, they had her on and she's trying to take everything in, I think. Now, she also says Kimberly is doing better, and they plan to take her off a ventilator soon. She says friends at their church in Lexington are helping them get through this difficult time. Amazing to compose a young woman considering all she has going on with her family right now. You know? What a tragedy. Yeah, absolutely. Horrible. Well, this word just coming into our newsroom at WKYT. Harrodsburg police are investigating after a Time Warner cable worker died on the job. Police say 42-year-old William Dennis Kokenauer died yesterday after he was hit by a car. Now, it happened on Moberly Road. Police say he was on a service call, and his van had flashing lights on and cones out when he was hit by a passing car. Police say the driver is cooperating. No charges have been filed so far. Police are still investigating. A senior Egyptian forensics official says based on recovered body parts, it appears that an explosion ripped apart Egypt Air Flight 804. That's a new development this morning. The official is part of the Egyptian investigative team and has personally examined the remains. He says all 80 pieces of human remains brought to Cairo so far are small, and he says the remains have burns on them and are very tiny which suggests that an explosion may have taken place in midair on board that aircraft. The Paris to Cairo flight crashed into the sea last week, killing all 66 people on board. Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton are attacking each other as they focus now on the general election. But Bernie Sanders refuses to back out of the race and predicts the Democratic convention could be messy. Hannah Daniels has the latest on the presidential race from New York. In front of a crowd of thousands in California, Bernie Sanders is blasting his rival Hillary Clinton for rejecting his invitation to a debate ahead of the state's June 7th primary. I think it is a little bit insulting to the people of California that she is not prepared to have a discussion with me about how she will help the Californians address the major crises that we face. Only 90 delegates away from clinching the Democratic nomination, Clinton's campaign says her time is best spent meeting directly with voters and focusing on her likely opponent, Donald Trump. During a rally in Detroit, she attacked Trump's positions on the economy. What little we know of his economic policies would be running up our debt, starting trade wars, letting Wall Street run wild. He could bankrupt America like he's bankrupted his companies. The presumptive GOP nominee is fighting back. Last night, he spoke about his recent personal attacks on the Clintons, including former President Bill Clinton's history with women. I don't like doing that, but I have no choice. When she hits me on things, I just have no choice. They're dirty players. They've been dirty players historically, and I have to fight back the way I have to fight back. Today, Donald Trump is running unopposed in Washington state's mail-in Republican primary. Hannah Daniels, CBS News. Now, Donald Trump heads to New Mexico for a campaign rally tonight. Both Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders hold events in California today, where 475 Democratic delegates are up for grabs June 7th. Bill Cosby faces a prelim preliminary hearing today in his sexual assault case. Back in December, Cosby was arrested and charged with drugging and assaulting a former Temple University employee at his home back in 2004. Cosby maintains the sex was consensual. Well, just in time for summer, a Jessamine County Theater has a new policy for children. Leaders of Movie Tavern in Brandon Crossing said anyone 16 or younger can now watch a movie without an adult guardian for shows starting before 5.30 p.m. But theater leaders say film ratings and guidelines will still be enforced. They say children ages 1 through 12 are eligible for child ticket pricing. We'll keep it right here on Mid-Morning. 
coming up, her love of a Star Wars character has landed one fan, fan on national television. So check that out. And also, the stars were out for another movie premiere in Hollywood. It's really all about the temperatures in the field the next few days, but because of the feel, the way it's going to change with that muggy air, here comes some thunderstorms. I'm going to talk about that coming up next. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. Kind of depends on where you are early this morning, which will depend on the temperature outside. Everybody dealing with sunny skies. There's no doubt about that. A couple of clouds here and there, the farther south and southeast that you go, but uh, nonetheless, no rain. Falling over our head at this moment, 64 degrees in Jackson. That's an awesome feel, even better feel in the capital city and also Lexington here in the blue grass. So it's a great day again today. I have no problems with the forecast today, and neither should you. At 82 degrees, mostly sunny skies. And remember, right now, at 82 degrees later on this afternoon, for today, we're not talking about really muggy air. 82 today will not feel like 82 tomorrow or the following day because some big time moisture is going to stream on in here when the 40s and 50s for dew points and dew points get a little confusing but basically it's just the moisture in the air all right the measure of that and when you're in the 40s and 50s it's still relatively dry that's not that bad but once you get in the 60s and even some 70s 70s gets really tropical that's when it gets sticky and we're going to have that the next few days a couple of rumbles are back once that moisture moves on in then uh, give us enough uh, opportunity to actually see a little energy come through and knock out a few rumbles of thunder. That's tomorrow, that's Thursday, and that's Friday. All of these days, all three of these days, pretty much carbon copies of each other, where most stay dry, but you can't rule out that 40% chance of rain with temperatures there in the 80s and muggy conditions. So you better enjoy the dry weather, if you will, while it lasts, because it's not going to be widespread, don't get me wrong, but you will have a couple of rumbles of thunder to go through uh, tomorrow through your Friday. Now let's talk about your weekend, because your weekend is a big weekend. It's a holiday weekend, Memorial Day. We did a story on it earlier, how so many people are going to be traveling is we travel off towards your Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and even Monday. Just know this, you won't have a great rain chance to travel through, so there's good news. Another thing is heading out to the lakes, rivers, uh, you know, the pools, the pools that are actually opening this weekend as opposed to next weekend. It's perfect weather for it. I know the water, like you were talking about earlier, Bill, still a little bit chilly, but it's nice and refreshing when you're really, really hot there on the boat, and then you jump in and get a nice little refresher. But, yeah, it's, it's really not a wash. I know it looks like a lot of rain there on the screen, but 30 and 40% chances of rain aren't. That bad. Just a now right, and then. Keep it in mind. Yeah, all right. Keep it in perspective. Always, always get a wetsuit to try to stay there you go. <laughs> a little warmer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who would have thought that a cackling Chewbacca could be such an internet sensation? You know, the more you watch of it, the funnier it is, right? The mask wearing Star Wars fan with the infectious laugh got a surprise from James Corden and the Late Late Show. <laughs> I was watching oh, my friend. I can't talk. Hold on. Hold on. I need to process. <laughs> Candace Payne got to meet Star Wars director J.J. Abrams. Payne became an internet sensation after she posted a video on Facebook showing her priceless reaction to her new Chewbacca mask. In addition to meeting Abrams, Payne also got a special message from Peter Mayhew, who plays Chewbacca. He invited Candace and her family to attend a Star Wars fan expo so they can meet in person. Her video, by the way, has gotten more than 140 million views in just three days. That is incredible, but you can't watch it and not start laughing. I'm telling you. Uh, All the fun attention. Right. These days you've made it if you uh, you get into that car, I guess. Right? <laughs> yes, I think so. Right. Love those segments with James yeah. Corden. Angelina Jolie goes back to school and Johnny Depp goes down the rabbit hole again. Chris Martinez with your eye on entertainment. Johnny Depp and Anne Hathaway were among the A-listers who turned out for the U.S. premiere of Alice Through the Looking Glass. There's nothing wrong with me. In the sequel to Alice in Wonderland, Mia Vajikovska's Alice has to save the Mad Hatter, played by Johnny Depp. This story is like 153 or something, 150 something years old. Um, and it, not only does it still stand up, it still resonates. Alice Through the Looking Glass opens Friday. 
Game of Thrones star Amelia Clark walked the red carpet in New York City for the world premiere of her new movie, Me Before You, co-starring The Hunger Games' Sam Claflin. Come on, let's give these tosses something to talk about. The film, based on the British best-selling novel, is about a young woman hired to care for a wealthy man who was paralyzed in an accident. My agent sent me the book. He, he was like, the, the author's writing the screenplay, so here's the book, and you can read that. And then... Um, and so I read that first and fell in love. Me Before You opens next week. And Angelina Jolie is adding another title to her resume. The actress, director, humanitarian will be a visiting professor at the London School of Economics. The Oscar winner will teach a master's course on women, peace, and security next year. That's your Eye on Entertainment. Chris Martinez, CBS News, Los Angeles. Hope you'll keep it here. Here's your chance to help today. Kentucky nonprofits are feeling the love as Kentucky Gives Day is underway right now. Find out how you can help make a difference next on WKYT. And tonight's Mega Millions jackpot is $203 million. Wednesday night's Powerball jackpot, $80 million. Hey, welcome back. It's mid-morning on WKYT, and today is a day of giving, and it, apparently it's off to a strong start, still needing your help. Kentucky Gives a Day is going to be running through 1159 tonight, and it helps Kentucky nonprofits. And to talk more about it, we're joined by Marion Gwynn, CEO of God's Pantry Food Bank, along with Mark Robinson with Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield, the sponsor of Kentucky Gives Day. Welcome. Glad to have you in here today. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Exciting you. time. Early reports are good uh, that uh, folks are taking part in this, but it's one of those things, if you, uh, Mark, uh, don't uh, remember, that's going to slip by you. So it's, it's today only, right? Exactly. It's 24 hours. It started at midnight and it goes through tonight at 11.59 p.m. So everyone still has, you know, the rest of the day to participate. And, um, you know, it's cool. It's a statewide event. Um, it gives people a chance to support smaller organizations. We give a lot of money to larger organizations and, and spread it out, but it's, this is a great way for people to support something that's small that actually means a lot in communities where they may not have the resources to uh, go out and, and fundraise you know, at a level like this. And it's not just statewide. I think they'll tell you that there's a large participation of people from outside the yeah. state. Maybe they've lived here before and they want to come back and still give to something that meant something to them when they lived here. So it's very cool. And, and a chance great to, to learn. Yes, I know that's exactly where you were going, what I was right? going to say. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Great a chance to kind of browse yeah. through all of these groups that need support throughout the year, volunteer hours Absolutely. as well. Marion, what does an event like this mean to what you're able to do at God's Pan? It means a lot to us. It, the timing, I think, is great this year, kind of moving into summer with a burst of giving, because to be honest, for most nonprofits, charitable donations kind of decline during the summer. People's attention is focused elsewhere uh, and maybe not so much on charitable giving. So it's a really great opportunity to boost um, funds for nonprofits that are doing important work every day of the year. I was going to say the needs are ongoing uh, for a place like yours. You are uh, feeding folks all the time, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. We uh, are moving millions of pounds of food each, uh, each week. So how does it work? When people sign on, they just go and, and find the groups they're, or they're interested in? How does it work? It's very simple. There's a search op option at the top of the website. That's Kentucky Gives. Um, and you can just type in the name of a nonprofit that you're interested in, and it will pull up that nonprofit if they're one of the 200 plus that have signed on for this day. Um, but it's also a great way to learn, as you said, about nonprofits because many, many of the nonprofits have videos and photos along with text describing what they do, and you know, go shopping, do a whole shopping spree go. on <laughs> Kentucky Gives today. Make it a day to learn and give. That's right. Thank you very much. Good luck. Yeah, appreciate it. We'll keep it right here this mid morning. Just a moment, we'll check in with the Mr. Food Test Kitchen and see what is cooking up, and it looks good. Glad you're along with us. If you want big flavor this Memorial Day weekend without having to do a lot of work, this is the recipe for you. And today in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, it is cowboy ribs. If you love big flavor without having to do lots of work to get it, then you got to see the ribs we're making today. Instead of slathering them with barbecue sauce and roasting them like we normally do, we're using a dry rub. And all that is is a combo of a few basic spices mixed together and rubbed onto our meat before we roast it. Want it a bit spicy? Add chili powder, black, cayenne, or crushed red pepper. For a touch of smokiness, use some regular or smoked paprika. 
And don't forget the herbs. You can always mix in some oregano, basil, or thyme. By adding a little brown sugar, you'll get a nice caramelized crust. And for these ribs, we combine some kosher salt, black pepper, ground cumin, oregano, some chili powder, garlic, and brown sugar. And give it a good mix before rubbing it on some beef ribs. It's like we're giving them a massage. Once they're completely coated, place them on a baking rack. This helps them roast evenly and keeps them from getting too greasy. Then into the oven they go until they practically fall off the bone. The tenderness from the roasting and the flavor from the dry rub makes these crusty ribs stand apart from your standard saucy ribs. The recipe for cowboy ribs is online now along with our Texas barbecue sauce to serve on the side for dipping. Let me tell you, there is nothing like these ribs. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where every day we're looking for more flavorful ways for you to say, ooh, it's so good. There'll be a lot of ribs and grilling Check and them all out, kinds the next few days. Big Looks like time. what you just love. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Ribs. Uh, you're looking at hamburgers, hot dogs all throughout the work week and toward the weekend. Weekend's big time for that uh, with the holiday weekend going on. It's going to be very warm. It's going to be very muggy, but it's also going to be mainly dry. So there is a small chance of rain as we head throughout the rest of the work week. Uh, but nonetheless, I mean, look at these temperatures. Guys, we haven't seen the 80s in this string of days since last year. <laughs> it's been a while, and here it comes. Here it Summer's is. coming. All right. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much for being with us for mid morning. We'll have all the latest for you coming up here at noon. Make it a great day. We'll see you at noon.